What's going on, everybody? This is going to be my Brazil vlog. I'm going to talk about traveling internationally for the first time, my experience in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm going to talk about CCXP, Iron Studios, and more. I did get to go with my daughter, Jade, which was super fun. We got to share that experience for the first time using our passports and all that stuff. I guess I'll try to go in chronological order so that I don't forget anything. And uh, let's start with the trip, man. So the way that we had to travel was we needed to go to the Indianapolis airport and fly to Chicago for O'Hare. They're both international airports, but I guess Indy doesn't have as many flights out. So we went to Chicago, which was like a 30 minute flight. But here's the thing. When you go to the airport, you have to show up, you know, a little bit early so that you can get through TSA and all that stuff. So you have like that initial wait time. You've got that 30, 40 minute flight. And then we had a four hour layover until the flight to Brazil. Now the flight to Brazil, I was under the impression that international flights gave you more seat space not the case whatsoever and i guess i should have known when it was you know an american airline with united so we had a 10-hour flight from chicago to brazil and i gotta say man flying economy was not it almost inhumane the way that they pack you up like sardines and i don't know about you guys but i'm one of those people that i cannot fall asleep on a plane whatsoever i feel like even with the slight recline you're sitting straight up. I have broad shoulders and I'm on the aisle and people are constantly bumping me, which is crazy. When I walk through the aisle, I make a conscious effort not to touch anybody. I'm like weaving like I'm in the club. Man, people are bumping into you, hitting your head. Like even if you did fall asleep, you're getting woke up every single time. And we were in the middle. So it's, it's a large plane, even though the seats were the same, where you have like, you know, two seats on this side, two seats on that side, and then the three in the middle. So we were in the middle and, uh, Man, it was a crazy, uncomfortable flight. A lot of lessons learned that helped us on the way back, but I always kind of like just bring my backpack and throw that under the front seat, take my shoes off. I had no space whatsoever, didn't get any sleep. So we ended up being up for like 26 hours straight by the time we landed in Brazil, which sucks because I was supposed to be able to visit the Iron Studios headquarters first things first. We touched down in Brazil and it's a long, kind of uh, wait to even get off the plane and get into the streets because you got to go through immigration which is where they stamp your passport once you arrive into the country then there's customs which wasn't too bad but man right away we are in sao paulo brazil and the airport is kind of hectic it's summer over there because it's in the southern hemisphere whereas it's winter right now so it's hot it's humid it's like florida weather that we grew up with but we end up getting through everything uh iron studios did hook up a driver to get us to the hotel now the only problem is we arrived to the hotel at about 10 a.m and the hotel is talking about you can't check in until 3 p.m and i'm already like highly agitated just because no sleep like i said for like 26 hours and it's just like uh one more thing after the other with waiting and sitting and we're tired we end up getting to where we're able to check in though at around 11 30 so we just sat around for about an hour and a half took a load off and then we checked into the hotel now brazil first time going there and let me let me try to uh, describe my thoughts on what i thought brazil was like for the first time first thing i got to say is the brazilian people were extremely welcoming to me i mean even you guys in the comments that i didn't even see in person just so happy that i was there and just you know welcome to brazil thank you for coming here all this and that so that was super inviting the people there man the people that we met at the convention the iron studios team it was extremely overwhelmingly welcoming which was a, a nice touch now brazil you know what's so crazy it's like you go to an entire different country and you realize as much as things are different they're so similar as well brazil at least sao paulo in the area that we were in which was like on the west side of the city felt very much like a big city here in america it really felt a lot like new york city in the sense of the traffic the aggressive driving the uh, kind of storefronts the setups and it kind of felt like if you guys ever seen any like dystopian movie like I Am Legend where humanity is gone and then the big city gets overgrown and overrun by vegetation. So it kind of felt like a big city. I kept thinking concrete jungle in my head because you have the buildings, 
graffiti everywhere and then you have so much vegetation trees everywhere huge trees you have grass everywhere leaves bushes so it's this perfect blend of concrete and nature which i felt like had a, a subtle beauty to it now it's not like new york city in the sense of like foot traffic there's not as many people walking around there and the streets are not as wide again at least where we were at a lot of people on scooters weaving in and out throughout traffic a lot of tailgating a lot of honking horns but you know what i didn't hear a lot of i didn't hear a lot of police sirens ambulances fire trucks like if you're in new york city you hear that all day and all night it was relatively quiet in that sense just a lot of honking and the honking wasn't necessarily like aggressive bad it's just kind of like yo i'm here or thank you so the honking was funny speaking of thank you you kind of have this assumption because i know people from brazil that work for iron studios and many of them speak english and you're under this assumption yeah like maybe most countries speak multiple languages and in america we only just speak one language wrong <laughs> i want to say about one out of every 10 people i've met kind of spoke english so it was crazy to be in this area where you don't speak the language you're hearing portuguese all around you and you quickly realize what words you need to pick up yes no thank you those kind of things obrigado i think is thank you hopefully i was saying it right the whole time seem was yes so uh that was interesting man trying to navigate moving around in a country where you don't speak the language it was an eye-opener man google translate was my friend i had to do a lot of typing and showing and especially to uber drivers not even like the numbers if you're saying numbers in english they're not going to understand so you have to show them like the four digit code when you take an uber and let's talk about uber let's talk about their currency the real the real is about four dollars and ten cents to every u.s dollar the cool thing about that for me is that most things were priced at what you would have paid usd anyway for example an uber ride most of the uber rides i was taking were about forty dollars in real so again you think you would pay forty dollars for an uber in new york city all day but really that's four times the amount that's actually being charged so it's like six to eight dollar uber rides which was super dope stuff was really affordable even though the inflation has hit that economy hard and the dollar has pretty much lost value by double over the last two decades i think it used to be like a two to one kind of ratio and now it's like i said a little bit over four to one the price of goods hasn't really risen with that in in relation if that makes sense so everything was super affordable for us we'll talk a little bit more about the city later but first we got to talk about ccxp ccxp is the comic-con experience or the comic-con expo and it is is the largest comic-con in the world but i do have to use the word comic-con loosely it's basically san diego on steroids and you know how most people will say san diego comic-con is more of like a corporate con rather than comics this is even more so that but i still kind of dig that they have huge interactive booths from every large company i'm talking about nintendo xbox warner brothers i mean you name it there they were there huge celebrities were out there jason momoa zendaya a anna taylor jo johnson or anna taylor whatever her name was zach snyder and all that stuff so it was huge and every booth they really highlight the experience it's almost like every booth is part of an amusement park kind of theme that you can walk in and it's interactive and and you're not really buying so much at these booths you can i mean there's um obviously vendors there and then there's like this medieval times themed market where you have kind of more of like the local vendors rather than the company vendors they did have a comic book presence on the floor though there were two comic book vendors that were just selling cgc books and back issues american comics then you had the panini press stuff which they were selling omnibus absolute editions all in portuguese and then you had also booths selling manga but again all in portuguese so my daughter and i were like damn there's so much stuff we would buy just to read while on the plane and stuff but it was in portuguese which makes sense that's what they speak out there and they had not artist alley but artist valley they had humberto ramos out there they had john ramita jr out there a, a ton of artists so ccxp spares no expense and that's going to be a theme i'm going to talk about a little bit later actually i think i could get into that right now i got to talk about renan pz renan is the owner of iron studios but he's also the owner of pz the statue distribution company and one of the six founders founders and people who run CCXP. Renan is a presence, man. It was such an honor to meet him and it makes so much more 
sense looking in hindsight about this whole trip. So let me talk about Iron Studios real quick. Iron Studios in Brazil is what Sideshow is to us in America. And, and it's so funny because I think a common perception of Iron Studios here, first of all, I think most casual people think that Sideshow makes those Iron Studios statues that they ship out. People think the 110 scale Mortal Kombat line is from Sideshow or the X-Men line is from Sideshow. Now, savvy collectors know that Sideshow just distributes Iron Studios pieces, but I think we also kind of think, oh, these are just statues that um, Sideshow sells for this company. But you got to understand that that's what Iron Studio is over there. They're not only a statue manufacturer, they're a huge distributor for other companies as well. Whether it's Sideshow, Prime One, XM, Mattel, Hasbro, they are huge out there and it was so eye-opening to see that where it all started from was Renan he had a statue distribution company called PZ which is his last name and they would sell those statues now he really wanted someone to make a statue of his hometown hero he's a Formula One race car driver super famous in Brazil and the story goes that he couldn't really get anybody to make it so he decided to make it himself they made a 110 scale statue back in 2013 of his favorite race car driver and basically started Iron Studios from there. If you guys saw my booth tour from CCXP, they had like a history of 10 years of Iron Studios. It starts with him. And then every year they grab more and more licenses. So the statue distribution company became also a manufacturer, just like Sideshow. And then when you have CCXP, which again, it's the largest comic convention in the world. I think they were expecting 350,000 guests this year, and I think they might have hit or exceeded that. Whereas San Diego Comic Con this year, I think it was under 300,000. And the story goes kind of similar to how Iron Studi Studios came about. Renan wanted Comic Con to come to Brazil, and for whatever reason, Comic Con International or Read Pop, these companies didn't want to take on that challenge so he got together with five other investors and started ccxp built it from scratch and again became the biggest comic con in the world meeting renan is like one of those people one of those people that just has that aura and it just makes sense when you meet him such a charismatic guy such such a passionate collector this dude owns like every jurassic park memorabilia from the actual films that you can think of signed scripts that steven spielberg has signed just props and things from the movie and we'll talk about the restaurant uh, soon as well but also I want to talk about with Iron Studios is they have gone from being a statue distributor to a statue manufacturer and now they have their own IP in Residium now it seems like whatever Renan puts his hand into he goes full force all the way so with Residium not only do you have smaller scale figures 110 scale statues quarter scale dioramas in the works prime scale which is like one third scale statues of the main character coral but they already had one mobile game which is kind of like a joking like like an angry birds type of game then they released another mobile game i want to say it came out this weekend which is more of like a platformer and then they debuted the trailer for their highly detailed high graphic console slash pc game for residium which looks beautiful i mean they showed me the trailer before they presented it on the panel and man it looks great the in-game uh, CGI I, I want to say cutscenes but they're not cutscenes it's all in-game and just the um, professionalism of it all they built it in-house with a team of 10 people and it looks just as good and professional as any triple a video game that you would see on a console or on PC right now so they've also teamed up with like a lifestyle brand I kind of like correlate it to like Huff how Huff's kind of like a hip brand here in the States and then they work with Marvel so they're working with that brand basically putting a lot into residium they have a comic book series working on a ton of stuff and the more they explain residium to me the more i got into it because you have a lot of cool aspects like they covered every angle the story is essentially the sun hundreds of years in the future stops giving off uv radiation and starts giving off a different type of radiation the people there harness it it's called sig and that's basically the form of energy that's used in this dystopian future you have this long kind of tower building like a mega city the bottom is the crater and that's where all like the common people live and that's where coral lives she's a mercenary slash assassin taking up in her mother's footsteps but her real passion is to create these plush little dolls called boogie bears now the boogie bears from like a marketing aspect i love the idea because you can make however many of them you want bt 
is the name of that big pink one that you guys have seen that was like huge at the convention floor and what coral does is she is the only one that has found a unique way to harness that sig energy to basically use it as like a fear gas fear toxin that she puts into these bears and throws it at her enemies and then they see her transform into this like beast type of creature so like i'll tell you i really got into the lore just seeing how much they're throwing into this I, I really wish them the most success with it. I hope it resonates with fans and because becomes a big thing, homegrown in Brazil. So that's Residium, that's PZ, that's Iron Studios. CCXP was a huge convention space. I mean, it was so overwhelming. Again, every booth was enormous. There was no small little booths on the main floor there. There was a Mortal Kombat 1 booth, Ed Boon was out there. We did hit some panels, like I, I posted on my Instagram story. We got to go to the Zack Snyder panel. We saw the entire rebel moon movie which was like the pitched rated r star wars script that lucasfilm or disney passed on and Zack snyder made into his own movie i don't want to get too much into it i am curious to see the fan reception i already can see star wars fans kind of shitting on it it was an entertaining movie for sure it felt like a Zack snyder movie he brought out the whole cast it was super hype the auditorium there's two auditoriums there's ultra and thunder and I wanna say Thunder was the big, huge one. This was such an impressive auditorium. It was crazy. All right, anyway, so let's keep moving forward. My daughter and I, we really ate at the convention for the first couple of days, which again, that real, man, <laughs> the US dollar went a long way there. So we ate there for the most part, but then we did get a chance to, first of all, hook up with some other content creators. I got a shout out to Diana Monster and her husband, Javi. Iron Studios had brought them out there as well, so we kind of, were going back and forth in the shuttle to the convention and they were super cool they're from panama they had more experience traveling and like i was picking their brains and seeing how they do content and how i do content it was a cool experience and then joel from big bad toy store the owner of big bad toy store was out there as well and we all went out to dinner and this was like the first time getting the authentic brazilian experience i ate the brazilian food and the drinks i don't want to try to pronounce it because i'm going to say it wrong we went out to this nice restaurant and it was kind of like a place where guys were taking their dates and everybody was dressed up and we're wearing like comic book tees and everything but uh, the food out in brazil first of all man you guys might hear this a lot like americans you hear about people traveling and it just feels like they use more natural ingredients like you're eating food and you're not feeling lethargic you're feeling like you're eating like real food like again with natural ingredients they do a lot of seafood there they're heavy on the meat heavy on the carne so uh we had a, a ton of food man we had what prawns we had ceviche which i'm from south florida so a lot of similarities to cuban food i mean it's latin america so it felt like cuban food a lot of rice and and beans and and meat and stuff so that was dope and um super cool to pick joel's brain he was a cool guy man big bag toy store i'm sure you've heard of it huge got to be like the biggest online retailer that you can think of when it comes to figures so that was super cool then we would basically go back and forth from the hotel to the convention floor i'm getting content i was able to see all of the statues that iron studios had on the floor all the new reveals that i shared with you guys digging their spider-man versus villains line in 110 scale they're slowly converting me to a 110 scale collector uh, looking forward to that I'm already currently collecting their X-Men stuff their TMNT stuff and also they have the infinity gauntlet line that's coming out which man so many characters tease I think I can say this because it was teased at last year CCXP Thor was out there on the floor today we've already seen Thanos we've seen the big quarter scale one with the real gems but they're they're also doing a 110 scale version of that Captain America's coming Silver Surfer's coming Doom is coming amongst others so that's dope they're new one four scale legacy replica line which you guys have seen beast i did see the next character being sculpted when i was at iron studios headquarters i don't think i could speak on that but they do have other characters coming out in that line they're also taking a lot of classic pieces that they did in prime scale and in quarter scale and re-releasing in one tenth so if you guys saw my tour of the headquarters the wolverine versus juggernaut you have stuff that they had as exclusives at ccxp like the prime scale batman boom busted down to one tenth scale their classic quarter scale spider-man and it's funny how self-aware they are not funny it's refreshing to see how self-aware they are and how they want to correct things that or improve on things from those past pieces when they're redoing them so we should see that piece the one where spidey's breaking through the glass be re-released as a uh, one tenth scale they also had the vader the iron man 
all of that stuff and and then vice versa the the formula one racer i mentioned the first iron studio statue is being re-released in quarter scale now so that was super cool we did get to hit another restaurant my daughter and i we just kind of walked around where the hotel was and just had a great experience authentic brazilian food it was just a great experience altogether i think the biggest takeaway for me on this trip being a content creator that does collectibles and uh, somebody who's just a fan of statues it was eye-opening to see how big iron studios is out there how big renan and and, and pz and and all of that all of that stuff is out there and i just i wanted to share that stuff with you guys as well to realize man this isn't just some company that sideshow sells statues for i mean they they do that as well over there respectively for for sideshow pieces and all that that i mentioned so oh the one more thing i got to mention so in addition to <laughs> pz iron studio ccxp they also have a jurassic park restaurant now this is the second iteration it used to be a standalone restaurant now it's inside of this mall which is like this beautiful four-story mall and you know how they say in jurassic park spare no expense i think renan took that phrase literally i was joking it seems like he builds these places with no intention on making his money back <laughs> like the amount of love time craftsmanship that was put into the headquarters that was put into the restaurant was amazing first of all you walk into the restaurant you already feel like you're in the jurassic park theme park you have the music going all of the employees are dressed up like they work at jurassic park memorabilia everywhere and this is just like his collection overflowing into other places stuff from the movie signed stuff from the actors stuff all over the walls and, and all of this inside of the eating area all of the food is themed and the packaging and the cups everything is jurassic park themed and actually it's connected to one of three iron studios concept stores that sell statues from iron studios and other companies as well prime one studio had jurassic park pieces in there koto bukia figures whether it's mattel or hasbro and all that stuff but that's not even it man inside of the jurassic park restaurant again there's stuff all over the walls huge like interactive backlit maps but there's also a guided tour guys this guided tour had about 10 areas recreated from the first movie and i was like yo who built this was this built by the people who built the universal studios stuff yes it is amusement park quality you have employees running around as paid actors like the one guy is giving you the tour and as you get to the velociraptor thing which is like again recreated from the first movie the animatronics are opening and closing the door another actor runs out in terror it's all in portuguese but again quickly that kind of goes away like you understand what they're saying and what's going on and then you're going through this tour they have the t-rex scene with two life-size suvs the jurassic park uh, suvs and the t-rex head and the dilophosaurus and then you, you go into the building the part where the kids are alone and they're eating all that food out there and the velociraptors are in the back yo they recreated this so true to the movie it was really unbelievable i'm we're walking around in there i'm like where are we where is all of this space in this mall where you have this huge restaurant attached to it like you feel like you got transported into another dimension they had the whole dino dna thing play for you like you're actually experiencing what they experienced in the movie it was mind-blowing man again <laughs> spared no expense I don't know how they're ever going to make their money back on this or if that even matters or not. And that, that's just like one of these eye opening things, man. You got this guy creating this stuff, not cutting corners. No corners are cut in anything, whether it comes to, you know, the, the booth, CCXP in itself, the restaurant. It was so refreshing to see that in a day and age where we're always taking the easy way out. We're always trying to worry about profits over experience. And that, that's the opposite of what I experienced out here at CCXP. The main focus was the experience for the collector the customer the person the patron at the restaurant whoever that took priority over profits is what it looked like to me the last day i mentioned going through the headquarters as well what was so funny to me about going through the iron studios headquarters it felt like when i went to sideshow and then here you have these two companies thousands of miles away with the same kind of vision so not to say anyone copied each other like they're just on the same page like the entire building is decorated immaculately 
like you have these Alex Ross art prints in these frames where I know how much it costs to frame stuff. These frames were definitely more expensive than the prints. And it's just that type of attention to detail and how everything kind of goes together. It's just, the doors are beautiful, the intricate details for the decor, you know, let alone the statues. And then you have the statues displayed everywhere. Just such a great experience to visit that headquarters. I did get to see the room, which Alex didn't let us in in that video. So I saw the sculptors, literally people were sculpting statues that are going to be coming out soon right in front of my face. So I saw the next quarter scale replica. I saw the next uh, infinity gauntlet, one tenth scale line piece being sculpted. There's pieces there that they made and that will never be released, whether it didn't make sense financially or I didn't get approved or whatever stuff that I didn't even know Iron Studios made that came out like almost 10 years ago. Such a humbling experience. I, I just have to give a huge thanks to Renan, first of all, for inviting us out there, having us in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, Alexander, Mike, he's from Cali, but he works with Iron Studios as well. He was there, just the whole team. It felt like family. They embraced us so much. And I just have a newfound respect for Iron Studios. I had it before. I mean, I've been collecting Iron Studios stuff and reviewing it before I even talk to anybody over there. But now I, I see them in a whole new light. And hopefully this video kind of shines that light on them as well. And uh, may maybe collectors in the States will kind of look at them a little bit differently, man. They are a force to be reckoned with. and. It makes sense why you still see them at conventions, why you still see them at San Diego in New York, because they'll put so much into it, not really worrying about, is it gonna make money or not? It's more so for the long game, so that people see Iron Studios, they know about the pieces, they know about their history. So man, it was such a, uh, a great experience. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching the stuff that I've been putting out. Again, thank you Iron Studios for bringing us out there. By the time you guys see this video, I'm already on a plane. I'm heading to Singapore, man. We're going to XM Studios headquarters. We're gonna go to SSGC. So it's gonna be a similar type of event. I'm gonna try to vlog it a little different than I did this one, You know, maybe get footage out actually while I'm there instead of doing an overlay. But anyway, man, let me know what you guys thought about CCXP, what it looked like from the outside looking in. I thank you guys for watching and stay minty fresh. Peace.